Xander Shoffley wins his second major of the year. I've been wanting to do this analysis for a while, better late than never. I heard the question asked earlier this week, and I thought it was really interesting. Would you rather have Xander Shoffley's year with two majors, or would you rather have Scotty Scheffler's year with a major, an Olympic gold medal, and then all the wins? Leave a comment below. Let's jump into the swing. All right, so let's uh, take a look at the setup here and just kick this off. Um, you know, I think he does a lot of really good stuff. His lines are very clean. He does a lot of similar things that we teach over in our blueprint on hipbombs.com. And to get this started, let's look at the left shoulder relationship to the left hip, okay? Uh, stacked on top of each other. That's going to allow his right shoulder to sit a little bit lower than the left. And that's going to set him up with a certain level of side bend. Now... Um, some of the guys that we've looked at, sometimes they'll set up with the left shoulder outside of the left hip, which might, um, make the shoulders a little bit more level. And the biggest thing that this is going to affect is the upper center of gravity relationship to the lower center of gravity relationship. Okay. Now, um, players move in and out of positions differently, but the key is we want to kind of have an idea of where a golfer's starting, how they're moving in the backswing. And then ultimately what that's setting them up to do in the downswing, which is really where we want to see the upper center and the lower center align. Um, so starting with the setup, it's always interesting kind of as that first touch point to see where they're moving from. Um, now, you might see some of the long drive guys on the opposite side of the spectrum. Okay, maybe uh, left shoulder a little bit more back, right shoulder a little bit lower. Um Ultimately, that's going to allow them to move through a little bit more of an extreme range of motion. But nonetheless, I think Xander starts in a really great uh, neutral position for playing normal golf. Now, if we look at his feet, he has a little flare in his feet, not a lot. I know uh, I recently saw a video of him talking about this with his father, who was his coach up until this year. And they always like to keep the foot, right foot or trail foot a little bit more neutral uh, because it helped him load into that trail hip more efficiently. The trail foot being square. So you like that from a, a loading of the of that trail leg? That comes again from track and field, you know, a shot put in particular. Like a, a baseball, a, a pitcher mm -hmm. uh, down the mount, his trail foot is pointed mm -hmm. inward, right? You can push off something pointed inward, but you cannot push off something pointing outward. So, so basically you're saying you, you don't really want to see this foot Turned out not say, not ever not ever if anything uh, we always taught with good side bad side and i would uh, always clearly say the good side is to be turned in the bad side is to be uh, turned out it's hard to get rotation with your hip if your foot's in much easier here but then if your foot's way flared out you don't get any load in your in your right cheek so there's a very fine line of where this foot needs to be but i i've lived and i've played golf on on both sides of it and i've had success doing both but i feel personally the most load and the strongest in, in my right cheek when this thing is pretty close to, so you're feeling this in your, in your right glute. Yeah, when you, I mean, when you wind up, when you, when you load up, I mean, when you do yeah. anything, like if you're trying to throw a ball or anything, it's all I'm right-handed, so everything is always loaded in this right side. If I'm gonna, you know, punch you in the face right now, like I, I need Please to don't. step back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not just golf. So like, like I said, I'm not gonna hit you in the face, but you know, if I'm gonna load up and, and, and try and, and lay one on you, I'm not gonna sit here with all my weight on my left side. I'm not gonna lay a very good hit on you. You know what I mean? Yeah. They use the example of a pitcher on a mound. A pitcher keeps that foot square. There's no flare to it. And ultimately, that allows him to load that trail hip. Now, the biggest thing I would say is for the average golfer at home, uh, first off, the pitching motion is more of a forward motion moving towards the target, whereas in golf, we got to wind up a little bit more to create speed. Um, and I also think that uh, depending on your demographic, so if you're older and you don't have much range of motion in that hip joint, uh, it might make more sense to actually add a little bit of flair, but I don't think it's a one size fit all. I think you got to kind of figure out what works best for you, just like Xander. Um, his grip is pretty neutral. Okay. So we can see two knuckles on the left hand on the right hand, the V points up at the right shoulder pretty neutral. Uh, you see this grip a lot on the PJ Tour. Uh, and an elbow alignment. It's left elbow at the target. So we have internal rotation of the left shoulder. And then you can see his right elbow points back at his right rib cage. So pretty standard lines there. Uh, moving to the down the line view. Uh, first thing 
that you can see is if I draw a line from the armpits down to the knees to the balls of the feet, those are all aligned. He has uh, his humerus, okay, is hanging on this side of 90 degrees, okay? So if we draw a line down that upper part of his arm, you can see that it hangs on the forward side of 90 degrees. Ultimately, this is going to create um, a certain distance from his hands to his pelvis, okay? It's really important that if the golfer is going to rotate, uh, they have space and range of motion to move through. So by having a little bit more space at a dress um, is going to allow more range of motion to move. Now, the other thing that we see is by having the arms a little bit further away from the pelvis, notice that the upper part of his arm, okay, doesn't sit too much on the side of the pec, okay? This is really important because as the body turns back, we want to see that arm glide in front of that Adidas logo, okay, which is exactly what you see him doing. And sometimes uh, golfers get a little too overconnected, and it will affect how that how the body moves off the ball. So I really like that relationship there. Um, pelvis looks pretty neutral. So if I draw a line through his, his pelvis, you can kind of see it points uh, fairly neutral. What we don't want to see is a belt buckle that's tilted too far down. Okay, this way, that's going to put the pelvis in an anterior tilt. We might see more curve in the lumbar spine because of that. And ultimately, that's going to minimize the available range of motion in the hip joints. Um, slight curve through the lumbar spine. Okay, nothing crazy. Uh, overall, I'd say that's just the natural curve of his, of his lower part of his back. Uh, up through the upper part of his back gets a little bit more rounded. Okay, which is what we want uh, because the golfer is moving into extension in a backswing. We don't want to see too too much extension at a dress. So he, by starting in a little bit more of a flex position, he now has more range of motion to move into extension. Uh, for the most part, chin is down. Okay, so uh, sometimes we'll see golfers setting up with their chin really high. And uh, that puts a lot of strain on your eye socket. So you're, you're looking out of the bottom part of your eye, your peripherals. And uh, just a little unnatural. So by having the chin slightly down, it's it's a little bit more natural on the eyes. Um, now, one thing to note here, and uh, I don't know if this is something that he always does. I just want to point this out. But this is the number ninth hole at Bay Hill. So it's a hole that uh, slight dog leg to the left. If you look at his lines, he he's definitely set up down the right side. Okay, so I don't know if he's artificially sort of presetting that swing direction a little bit right um, to help him draw the ball. But you do see the ball start, okay, maybe almost in a slight pull fashion and then curving right to left. So uh, always interesting to see how, you know, the, the little details of how players, you know, set up and, and suit their, their shot bias. I know for myself, when I compete or I've competed my best in long drive, I've really never aimed at the center of the grid. So um, my comfortable shot shape is hitting a fade. So I'm always set up on the left side uh, and fading the ball towards the fairway. Or if I had a right to left win, I could do the same, you know, aim right and curve it right to left. Um, but for me, when I stop and play, one of the most uncomfortable things that I ever do is aim down the middle of the fairway. It just feels like the ball could go everywhere from there. So um, very interesting to see kind of uh, what he does uh, at address to, to, you know, along similar lines. All right. So let's get some lines up on the pelvis, right? Get an idea of what his, uh, what his body is doing, what his head is doing from an elevation standpoint. Um, so immediately one of the things that we like to see is we like to see a slight upload and a slight body move. Okay. So you kind of see he does both. He's going up and he's going slightly to the right before the club is actually moving. Okay. So when that's happening, you see a little bit of a, a pressure shift happening. So he's, he's shifting that pressure to the trail side. And um, as he winds back, okay, nice, wide, one-piece takeaway. Okay, very minimal moving parts here. Um, you can see roughly around waist high, his right hip has moved loudly a few inches. Okay. Um, now, the interesting thing about Xander, and I would say this is slightly different than what we would see from a Rory move, is 
as he winds up to the top, because he's so focused on loading into that trail hip, he tends to be a little bit more right side dominant. Okay, so if you you look at the top right here, and I were to zoom in on this just a little bit, okay, you can see that his pelvis hasn't done what we call a recentering move. So we see a lot of these players, uh, you know, in the second half of the backswing, they recenter their pelvis, which helps them get back to their lead side in time. Whereas I would say Xander is is slightly camped out on that right side just a little bit longer, okay? Which obviously <laughs> he's had a great year. Like I'm not trying to make it sound like that's a, that's a negative thing. Um, but by being more right, that's going to set him up to do something a little bit differently in a downswing, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, now, as he gets to the top, not much reset, okay? And one of the things you'll see is you'll actually see this lead elbow soften ever so slightly, okay? So, um, you know, I think this is where a lot of amateur players go wrong is they try to keep everything so rigid and so locked out. And from my experience of being over tense and over rigid, it just, you start to lose the flow and natural rhythm of the swing, which in my opinion affects sequencing. Uh, so I, I kind of like, you know, that, that, that left arm is just a little bit softer at the top of the swing. A um, couple things from a rotational standpoint, lead leg getting pulled back behind the ball. I think that looks really good. That's something that a lot of you at home can take away from this swing. And then also um, pretty big shoulder turn. So well past 90, especially with not having much lower body rotation. So I, I think that looks really good. Now, moving to the down the line view, we'll put some lines on his pelvis. Okay. And uh, for those of you at home, if you guys look at how I'm marking this up, you know, these are typical lines that I draw. Now, it's important to note that we have stabilized these swings here. So whenever you're filming at home, always make sure that you're you know, filming from a tripod or something stable. That way, if you do want to draw lines, um, you, you can do that. But these lines are pretty the pretty universal lines that I'm always drawing, right, to get an idea of how the body's actually moving. So little trigger with the right leg. You see the, the body kind of moving up a little bit. And then as he moves back, okay, we can see the face is very square to the arc, okay, at P2. So face is for the most part, matching the spine angle. Um, if anything, I would say maybe a, a, a little steeper shoulder turn off the ball, maybe slightly. I think that's that's where we start to see that face a little bit more in a hooded position. Not not bad, you know. Just uh, that's ultimately when we see that face too closed in the early part of the backswing. Sometimes it is that that left tilt that's happening a little bit too quickly. Um, but as he moves up to the top, hands work a little bit in. Okay, notice he still has a lot of flex in this right leg. Okay, so a lot of flex. He's holding onto that a long time. Ultimately, I think that's part of why he's a little bit more right at the top of his swing. And then hands work in, he goes up, and then at the top of his swing, as that arm starts to elevate, okay, so and what I mean by that is he's got his hands a little bit deeper at P3, and then left arm starts to work up a little bit higher, okay? So arm working up, and as that works up, that's going to actually help the left wrist go more into a bowed position, okay? So he's actually uh, increasing flexion on that left wrist as he moves to the top, because if we check it at P2, okay, eh, it's pretty flat, right? So not, not a ton of bowing there, but he's incrementally, as he's going to the top, adding a slight bow to the equation, okay? Now... Um, this is where, like I said, if we're comparing him to Rory, about P3 area, okay, we would have seen Rory have a little bit more of a right hip back, uh, a right hip move back and around. So he would have been sending his right hip back and around a little bit more right there. Xander doesn't. So because he's a little bit more right at the top, what happens is now he creates a harder lateral push at the start of his downswing, okay? And so as he creates this hard lateral push away from the target, what we're going to start to see is we're going to start to see his body's mass actually move towards the target, okay? That's the result of that push with the right foot, okay? And so when we get that much mass movement, 
Okay, you can see that the pelvis moved uh, pretty lateral. Okay, um, the upper body is actually going to start to tip a little bit back behind. Okay, and as we get him to P5, he does a good job sort of making up for it. Um, but you could kind of see that, you know, lower body has def definitely slid a little bit more uh, to the right. A lot of times when we see this, this move, it does help shift that swing direction a little bit more into out, which could support, you know, his, his draw. Um, but one of the things that I also want you to take note of is, is when we look at these wrist angles from the top, okay, and I'm going to get these lines out of here. But when we start to look at um, some of the most efficient drivers of the golf ball, and I would say him and Scotty are definitely in that category. They don't get too acute with these, these wrist angles in the downswing. Okay. So at P5, yes, there's some load in there, but you know, if we compare this to like a, a long drive professional, the, the, these wrist angles might look a little bit more like that, which could support speed, but might make it a little bit harder in terms of getting that face square. Okay, so really wide wrist angles. Um, and then as he goes down, uh, even though they are wide, I wouldn't say he's throwing the wrist angles out. He's still creating some load um, to where as he gets into impact, one of the things I want you to look at from P6 down to imp impact is the hands are, are sort of leading the way, okay? And I don't mean that literally, but what I mean is the hands are getting ahead of the ball before that club is actually impacting it. Okay. So a lot of, a lot of the amateur golfers at home, we might see that club kicking slightly earlier or slightly earlier. And you could kind of see that even though he doesn't have really wide, uh, or very cute wrist angles and downswing, he still does a good job of having some forward lean, uh, shaft lean at impact. So I like that a lot. Okay. Now, this is where I think he's really good uh, from the down the line view. Um, what we'll start to see is lower body and right knee specifically are sort of driving the rotation. Okay, so right knee leads. Um, and notice that as he does that, his upper body isn't getting open. Okay, so he does a great job of not letting the shoulders open as he turns that lower body. Okay, we see that a lot with pitchers. So if you look at a lot of how the pitchers train, a lot of the work they do is actually based around keeping those shoulders closed as they get to the lower body and move. This is something that um, the average golfer has a hard time doing. It does require a lot of work and a lot of maintenance around that. Um, ultimately, Xander's a professional, so I'm sure he's putting you know enough time in on his body. Um, but that's the biggest difference is lower body moves, upper body doesn't open. Um, eventually, everything starts to catch up. And because he had so much lower body rotation, what we get is that impact, we get uh, very open hips, okay? Uh, bent elbow, bent right elbow, which I love. You see, it, it kind of looks almost Dustin Johnson-esque right here. And then ultimately, uh, shoulders are slightly open relative to the pelvis, and then we see some right side bend in there, which I think is really good, okay? And... Uh, Ultimately, because he was able to get his lower body going first, that's going to help control the exit hand path. So you can kind of see the, the club and the hands as exiting through the, the left shoulder. Um, someone who doesn't have the lower body motion like Xander, the exit might get thrown out a little bit higher. So we might see that golfer's hands coming out a little bit higher through the right shoulder, maybe a little bit more rate of closure. Um, and then the opposite as well. If, if you're a golfer that your shoulders and your lower body open together, we might see that exit even lower, okay? So once again, uh, Xander's kind of in the neutral spectrum of things. Um, you know, overall, I think it's just a, a pretty solid swing. You know, he does a great job getting up into extension. Uh, beautiful finish position up on the ball of his right foot. Um, and then we see the heel at the end of the swing, maybe lean ever so slightly um, away from his body. So um, some players try to keep that right heel down and bank that right foot. Um, I definitely don't think Xander's doing that, right? Maybe even on the opposite side. So overall, I think this is a great neutral swing to look at, meaning he's not 
extreme on the speed side. It, it, yeah, there is some speed elements in there, but it's also got a lot of accuracy components in there as well. Um, it's been cool to kind of listen to some of the things that him and his father talk about. It seems like as he grew up, they kept the swing very simple. And even though his dad wasn't a golfer, his dad actually came from track and field background. So when you look at a lot of the rotational movements in track and field, a lot of the sequencing is, is, is the same, right? So um, he understands basic human function. Um, and I think that sometimes that could be a good thing, right? Because a lot of the, the, the golf coaches, it's like you get so far into the weeds that sometimes you start looking at things that really don't matter, myself included. Um, so very cool to see. I think uh, it would be nice to see him at least get a medal in, in Paris. I know he had a little bit of a meltdown um, that final day. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then for more content on how to improve your golf swing, head over to hitbombs.com. We'll see you next time. Thank you.